I'm Hugh Watts, and I'd like to continue on the discussion of the problems that children with limb deficiencies face and focus now on terminal stump overgrowth. What is terminal stump overgrowth? This is where there is a formation of new bone tissue at the ends of the cut bones in a crossbone amputation in a child. The consequences are local pain, and often the formation of new bone tissue can be sufficiently extensive that it can perforate right through the skin. This all ends with prosthetic problems, loss of school time, and the difficulty of having new prostheses made. How severe it is depends on which bone is involved. Most commonly, we see it in the distal tibia and fibula sometimes in the distal humerus, but very uncommonly in the distal femur because there is such a bulk of quadriceps muscle that masks any new bone formation on the end of the femur. It's important to recognize that it occurs with both acquired and congenital amputations. The incidence is approximately 17% in amputations done before the age of 12 years if the amputation is done across the diaphysis of a bone. If a bone demonstrates that it's going to undergo terminal overgrowth, this can keep recurring considerably after the age of 12 years, sometimes into the late teenage years. It does not incur, interestingly enough, if a disarticulation is performed and there is residual joint cartilage on the end of the stump. What causes it? Well, it used to be thought that this was related to overgrowth of the physis proximally. However, epiphysiodeses done in that region did not prevent overgrowth. It's now recognized that the etiology is that osteoblasts migrate on the unders from the underside of the periosteum distally beyond the cut ends, and then start continuing to produce new bone, and this will get uh, more and more as time goes on. How do you prevent it? Well, in a child, do everything possible to do a disarticulation, that is, do a Symes or a Boyd's operation, rather than a BK. In other instances where a, a low knee amputation is uh, mandatory, a small segment of bone from, say, a foot with a, a joint cartilage attached to it can be saved and placed into the uh, cut end of the uh, tibial stump. How to fix it when it does occur? Well, a simple resection is easily done and quickly done. However, it has a reputation for recurring at an interval of approximately 18 months, and frequent uh, operations not only lead to uh, loss of school time, but uh, also may lead to sufficient shortening of the stump to uh, make prosthetic fitting very difficult. Another option is to use Ertl's operation, whereby the distal tibia and fibula are fused. This was originally described by Ertl in the First World War in adults with below knee amputations and done with the hope of turning them into end bearing stumps. It was noted that if done in children, sometimes this would prevent overgrowth. However, it is not reliable in its prevention of recurrence and differential growth of the proximal tibia and proximal fibula often lead to either varus or valgus deformities. Another option is to cap the end of the bone with a material such as silastic or metal. This has largely been given up because these uh, caps tend to dislodge and there was frequent breakage. Ernst Marquardt from Germany suggested the use of cartilage as a biological cap. And for him, uh, he suggested using the iliac crest cartilage together with the little piece of iliac bone and to plug that into a split created in the distal tibia. 
The problem is that the tibia is hard to split without breaking it since it's a diaphyseal bone. The graft is not stable and then you add in the problems of bleeding and pain from the iliac graft site. Another option is to indeed use a biological capping with cartilage but to use the proximal fibula which we call a modified Marquardt operation. Here the proximal fibula is excised, inverted and plugged into the distal end of the tibia leaving the articular cartilage in place as seen on the uh, x-ray on the far right. In this enlarged view the fibula is plug fit into the distal tibia which holds it in place but is further secured by stitching the periosteum to the cartilage. We find this is easier to fit to the end of the tibia. It doesn't require cortical splitting and it's easy to keep it in place. And in 30 procedures in 27 patients, which were uh, done in children ages 4 to 15 and followed for a mean of 56 months, the mean survival time of the caps was 7 years, long beyond the 1.5 year uh, extent of uh, just simple revision. Is there knee residual instability? We don't uh, find that. It's important to recognize that the lateral collateral ligament has two segments, one which attaches directly to the tibia, which is left uncut, and the other to the proximal fibula, which is cut. And we have not seen any instability following a modified Marquardt procedure. So in review, terminal overgrowth is a formation of new bone on the end of a stump seen in children, particularly so when amputations are done before the age of 12, there's an incidence of about 17%. Once the overgrowth occurs, it can continue to recur long after the age of 12, often into the late teenage years. It does not occur in children who have a disarticulation with residual cartilage, articular cartilage left on the end of the bone. The problems are pain and skin alteration with multiple prosthetic fitting problems. And this is most commonly seen in the distal tibia and fibula. To prevent it, if possible, do disarticulations. If it occurs, it can be treated by multiple bone resections, tibia to uh, fibula fusion, or capping with elastic or metal. We recommend that the biological capping with cartilage is the best choice and that is with the use of the proximal fibular head which we call a modified Marquardt procedure. Thank you for watching and please uh, send us comments to, Hugh, uh, to hwatts at ucla.edu.